Hello, what's up YouTube? In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can easily get the best out of the skin texture and how you can easily get the best details out of your skin retouched images, especially for us that use frequent separation. So this is going to be an easy to understand tutorial and before you can proceed, I just request that you hit that like button down there. Just hit the like button on this video so that YouTube can push this to many people that are having the same issue regarding how to get the best and natural and highly realistic skin texture in the images using frequency separation. I know most of us tend to get it wrong at the start and I'll show you everything, every single thing in this tutorial. So this is the image that we, we are going to be using in this tutorial and it was taken by GMAX Studios and he is also a YouTuber and content creator and he also does the same work like I do tutorials and photoshop and i'm going to put the link to his channel in the description of this video so hoping you're done hitting the like button let's just come and proceed to learn learning the very emphasis or the main point for this tutorial you're just going to come to this and you have to understand frequency passion and what it involves so you can't just come and play an action before understanding what is entailed in frequency separation. So usually we have two layers in our frequency separation. I'm just going to come and I duplicate the background layer twice. Control or Command J. And I'm going to come to this layer and I'm going to name it to low frequency. So I don't want to use actions because I want everyone to understand every detail about this. So I'm just going to name this high frequency. I know you know all this. So I'm just going to come the low frequency layer and the amount of detail starts at this very point. So I'm just going to come and turn off the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer. So it is on the left low frequency layer, the details that we lose out in this low frequency layer are the details that we are going to be remaining with in our final retouched image. Let me just repeat this. The details that we blur out in the low frequency layer are the details that we are going to be remaining with in the final or retouched images so just come to the low frequency layer and just come to filter as usual blur and come to gaussian blur and we have this radius don't cram this because when you cram you're not going to be getting the best out of the skin textures in the images so you have to take the radius all the way down and you start moving this radius. Remember, different cameras have different megapixels and different sensors, so you may be having different details in the images that you're going to be retouching as a photographer. So you have to come to the radius and now left click and start moving this. So you have to move this radius up to a point when you are starting to completely lose out on the prominent details. So using this dialog box right here or this Gaussian blur window you have to use a picker and click and look for the area that has more or the more skin textures so you have to come the radius and when we lose out on these prominent texture textures it means that we're going to be losing out on the overall details or skin textures of the overall image so we have to get our hero textures or the most prominent textures and left click and start moving as you're looking at those textures. So we just want to stop up at that point when we are completely starting to lose out on these details. So just stop up at that point when you're just starting to lose out on those details. So as we move around this image, you can see that we have completely lost out on the details within the skin. And just stop at that point. Don't overdo it. Just stop that stop at that point when you're starting to lose out on the skin details so just come and hit ok and we're just going to come to the high frequency layer and now activate it by clicking on the eye icon then come to image and come to apply image so when, when you come to apply image if at all you don't understand this you're not going to get the best out of your images so just make sure to Take a moment and understand this point. So right now we can see we have a 16-bit image. So you may be able to have those actions that you download from maybe the internet, but you don't know how this basically works. 
and you may be playing those actions maybe on 8-bit images you can end up playing like a 16-bit action so make sure that you play the right action for the right bit depth of your images by bit depth i mean you can see that here i have 16 so if i told it is a 16-bit image just play that action as a 16-bit action on a 16-bit image so let me show you what i'm trying to mean so i'm just going to come to this apply image window and under layer just come and select the low frequency layer so meaning you're going to be subtracting our or extracting the textures from this low frequency layer and now make sure the channel is rgb and for a 16-bit image the blend mode has to be add for a 16-bit image opacity at 100 percent the scale is 2 and offset 0 make sure preserve transparency and mask are not checked then you come to this option which has invert and make sure you tick that option and when the preview is also ticked you can see we are we have our textures on this gray kind of layer that is for a 16-bit image but for an 8-bit image if at all you have 8 right here come and select the low frequency layer channel rgb blending mode has to be subtract or pass at 100 percent Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is 2 and offset 128 and make sure the invert is not on and you are going to be having the same results. But if at all, for this case I have a 16-bit image, I'm going to put the blending mode to add. Opacity at 100, preserve transparency and mask cannot check. Scale is 2, offset 0 and I'm going to invert the image and you can see the textures are on this gray kind of layer. Just come and hit OK. And now you're just going to come to the blend mode and change it down to linear light right here so we are done separating the frequencies of this image and we're just going to put this in a group control or command click on both layers and drag them into a group and we're going to name this to frequency separation so here is the mail the most important part of this tutorial yet again so you can see we have divided the frequencies of this image and now we just want to have the best out of the skin details. But if at all you had an action, it was going to stop at the point when we were blurring out the details from the skin area. And you have to do that. So right now we, are, we have finished dividing the frequencies of this image. Just come to the low frequency layer and select it. Make sure it is highlighted. And now we're just going to get a tool that is going to enable us to retain as much as we want the natural skin details. So we're just going to come and get the mixer brush tool. So come under the brushes and get the mixer brush tool. And for all the versions of Photoshop, your tool may be located down here. So make sure it is a clean brush and make sure the second option is checked because we want Photoshop to automatically clean the brush for us as we are trying to blend or even out the skin tones. Remember, this layer contains only the skin tones and the high frequency layer contains the skin textures. So the weight is going to be 9%, load 75, mix 90, and the flow 100. Make sure sample all layers is not checked. Weight is 9, load 75, mix 90, flow 100. Make sure sample all layers is not checked. And other people tend to use 30 30 30 it depends on what works best for you but for my case i prefer to use it as i have mentioned and now we are done setting the mixer brush tool and in order to see how to blend quite well remember the mixer brush tool settings the hardness is at zero meaning it is a soft brush so in order to see the areas where you have to even out quite well in your photos just come and turn off the high frequency layer. and in this case you're only going to be looking at the colors in the image. So increase on the size of your brush tool by using the brackets or the open and close brackets and simply left click and hold down and start moving. And as you are doing this, you're going to notice that the image is going to be turning out to look a little bit plastic or like an oil painting. And that is what we want to achieve because we just want to blend or even out or have even transitions within the model skin just like that and you can see it is looking plastic that is because we have turned off the textures from the image so just come and 
paint through just like that and you can see that it is now really affecting the image even more and the more it turns out to be like an oil painting the better the results you're going to be getting at the end of uh, the blending using a mixer brush tool so I'm basically trying to blend the colors that look alike and I'm following the shape of that area you can see this area is in an up down kind of format and I have to move that in an up down direction so when I turn on the high frequency or the texture layer and I turn on and off the overall group you can see that we have retained the original details within the model's skin and that is what we wanted this is the before after before after the details are still intact and they are really existing so what we want to do when you're done retouching for example the overall image you don't have to stop here I just wanted to show you how you can retain the natural and realistic skin details after you have been able to blend the details within the skin you have you just have to come and get a tool that is going to fine-tune everything for you and that tool is going to be known as the lasso tool so just come and get the lasso tool and make sure the first option is selected or the new selection mode is activated and the feather has to be at around 22 pixels because we just want a, a fine edge of our selection and we don't want that kind of harsh edge on the selections that we are trying to activate on the image so just come right here left click and draw according to the shape like i have told you so you make a shape and now come back to filter blur and come down to gaussian blur so right now we have a radius of seven so this is the radius that we had when we are dividing the frequencies of the image so usually you have to come left click and drag this towards the right hand side just like that up to a point when you feel like you have the best out of uh, the skin but usually I did I found out something that when you multiply 7 by 3 so whichever radius that you may have used when you're dividing the frequencies of the image just multiply it by 3 and just type in that value so 7 by 3 is 21 I'm just going to type in 21 and I'm just going to hit OK so I'm just going to come to the rest of the image and apply the same results so just select right click and come to Gaussian blend when you feel like the effect is too much you can just right click on that selection and come to fade Gaussian blur and you reduce on the opacity depending on what you want so that is how to retain original skin details and if I told you I've been really struggling with this this is going to help you as a retoucher or as a photographer out there and you can see the before and after before and after the skin is really intact and the skin texture is really highly realistic and looks as natural as possible so this is all for today's tutorial and if at all you have loved this don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you have been watching and you have not subscribed this channel Ronix from Ronix Photography thank you for watching I'll see you in yet more amazing trails and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating